Welcome to Dashing Dish. If the thought of company coming over makes you freak out inside, no need to fear. Today I'm sharing recipes that your family and friends are sure to love and they're super easy to make. Our company menu includes incredibly juicy and full of flavor spinach stuffed chicken breast, creamy, cheesy, crispy bacon and cheese cauliflower gratin, mouth-watering white cheese and chicken enchiladas, and we can't leave out dessert. How about a hassle-free six-ingredient trifle that will look like you spent hours to prepare? I'm Katie Farrell, and today we're creating meals that will welcome any guest into your home. Come join us. Well, on today's show, we're going to be talking about hosting a dinner party or a gathering of any type and having company over. And I have my favorite person to entertain with, my sister Emily, here with me today. She's going to be my sous chef. And we're going to be starting off with something that is very intimidating looking to make, but you'll see how actually simple it is. And why I say it looks intimidating is it looks like a really elegant type of meal, which is stuffed chicken breasts. And we're going to stuff these chicken breasts with a spinach feta parmesan filling. And I feel like anytime you see stuffed chicken, it just looks like it took a really long time to make, doesn't that's it? That's true. So, it looks pretty elegant. That's right. So we're going to show you how easy these are to make. And I guarantee you, you will reach for this recipe for your next dinner party. So we have about a pound of chicken. If you go a little bit over, that's fine. You want to have at least three full chicken breasts some spinach, so I have two cups here, a half cup of three types of cheese. We have a half cup of mozzarella cheese, half cup of feta, and a half cup of softened cream cheese. Then we're just gonna drizzle some avocado oil and some salt on top of the chicken breast. So that's kind of to taste. All right, so Emily, I'll have you start with the chicken breast. You can just put them in a Ziploc bag and pound them out with a meat pounder, and then I'll have you cut a little opening sure. along the side of the chicken. So let me know if you have any questions about that, just for us to stuff them. And I'm gonna start with our spinach. And I do use fresh spinach for this recipe, but you could use frozen. Um, and then just make sure you thaw it out if you use frozen beforehand. So Emily, I thought of the theme for this show because I thought, okay, what is the most difficult time for me to think about what to cook? And for me, the only thing that really intimidates me is cooking for other people when they're coming over. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, because sometimes you don't know what their taste preferences are or right. how much food you'll need, and it's way easier just to cook for your family for sure. Right, right, exactly. And then you also think about what if they don't like it? Right. Or does this look like I didn't really put any effort in? Right. You don't you want know? to try too much. Right, right. But you also want to try. It is, and I've actually even thought, gosh, instead of going through all that hassle, I'm just gonna order pizza yeah. and just make everybody happy That's because true. everyone likes Everyone pizza. pizza. So sometimes I just default to that and I cook for a living. So yeah. it goes to show if I feel that way, I guarantee you other people do as well. So I thought, okay, what would be some recipes that, that I personally would make for family or friends that are coming over to eat? And so this would be definitely all recipes that I would do for family and friends. Another tip too is if you're going to cut into the chicken breast, make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way. So this is a really dangerous, <laughs> dangerous cut really when you're cutting chicken because the chicken is slippery and slimy. So you wanna really make sure to keep your fingers out of the way of the knife. I think people will appreciate this meal is it's just warm and it's comforting and for me it reminds me of my childhood because mom always took us to Olga's and she'd get a spinach pie. Yes. <laughs> so it's like a healthier version of spinach pie too. Yeah so, that's true. Um, I think it just makes and it looks elegant so it makes it you know for a dinner party it looks really nice when you have company over. Yes it sure does. All right so Emily I will have you put those chicken breasts on 
this sheet pan and I'm going to warm up this filling in the microwave for 60 seconds and give it a good stir. That will kind of wilt down that spinach a little bit and melt some of the cheeses so that it all kind of melts together before we stuff the chicken breast. Okay, so this is the filling after we microwaved it. Now you can use frozen spinach for this, yes. right? Okay. And I did already say that, oh. so good job listening. <laughs> well, listen. There's a lot going on here. I'm only thinking about the pounding of the chicken. <laughs> what? That's all you can think about? Yeah. You don't listen to me? Oh, I couldn't hear anything over my pounding. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so that looks really good, and that's how you want it to look when it's done. It kind of looks like a spinach cheese dip filling. Yummy. So that's actually why I thought of this recipe, because yeah. one of the things I like to make for my guests when they come over is some sort of appetizer, and spinach cheese dip that's is a fan, fan favorite. So yes. who wouldn't like spinach cheese dip inside of their chicken breasts? So we're just going to divide this among the three chicken breasts. If you had four, chicken breast, then obviously you just put a little bit less filling. And so now we're just going to finish these chicken breasts off with a little drizzle of olive oil, which will just kind of keep the chicken moist mm -hmm. while it's cooking. And a lot of times stuffed chicken breasts, people forget about the outside of the chicken, but you do want to season that as well. So I'm going to do a little bit less than half a teaspoon of salt just on the outside and that will season the chicken breast up on the outside as well. So we're gonna put these in the oven 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes or until it reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees. Now, for stuffed chicken, you absolutely wanna use a meat thermometer because it's gonna be really hard to know if the chicken, just because it looks white on the outside, if it really cooked all the way through that filling. You don't want sick gas, so you do wanna make sure to check those chicken breasts for them to be fully done. All right, we're gonna put these in the oven. They look good. They sure do. So speaking of sides that would go wonderful with a chicken dish or whatever main ingredient that you're making for your meal, we're gonna make the most delicious side. In fact, sometimes I do eat this as a meal. It's bacon, cheesy cauliflower gratin, or gratin, or gratin. however, <laughs> however you want to say it. Uh, I don't really know what it's uh, technically called. I'm sure everyone says it differently. But regardless, this is the most delicious cauliflower that you will ever make. So Even good. if people don't like cauliflower. They see bacon. Good. True. You, you see <laughs> cheese and bacon, so it's you can't go good. wrong. So, Em, I'm going to have you cut up and dice up one onion, okay. and then... We will also need for this recipe two heads of cauliflower if you're going to use fresh or one 16 ounce bag of frozen cauliflower, one half cup of shredded cheese, about three or four pieces of bacon, one and a fourth cup of milk, two tablespoons of garlic, one half teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of oat flour, and a half cup of Parmesan cheese. So we're gonna start with our base for the cauliflower, but I do wanna mention that I already roasted up the cauliflower florets. You also will wanna cook up your bacon if you didn't buy pre-cooked bacon, which is the route that I usually go when I'm topping something with bacon just to make it easy. But you will wanna cook your bacon in the pan, just cut it up into little pieces and cook it up before you get started and then just kinda of wipe out the pan and you can start with your sauce. So. To the pan, I'm just gonna add half teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of minced garlic. I love the smell of cooked garlic. So good. And I'm just gonna kind of cook that over medium heat for just about a minute to bring all of the flavors out of that garlic. And I did spray my pan with cooking spray or you can use a drizzle of avocado or olive oil before you add that to the pan. So you wanna cook that for just about a minute and let it get all those flavors out. And then we're gonna add our oat flour. And this is the base of a creamy sauce. 
And Em, have you ever made like a cream sauce just from scratch or? Oh, no, I'm no? not dashing dish. I don't do things from scratch. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you, after you see how easy, easy this is, you will definitely be doing this more because it is super simple. And you can do this as a base for a casserole or even like a mac and cheese. Literally the exact same way that I'm making this cream sauce, you could use for any type of cheesy cream sauce. So that looks good and I know it looks a little bit strange. We have that clumped up oat flour, but you wanna just let that cook for about a minute and you'll see how it all comes together once I add the milk. And we're gonna get our whisk out and we're going to start to whisk over medium to medium high heat. And this will take just a few minutes and the more that you whisk, you'll see that it starts to thicken up because of the oat flour. So you could do this with regular white flour as well, but oat flour is a little more nutritious. And I use oat flour for all my recipes, that or almond flour, because it does give you some nutrition in your recipe. Okay, so you see how the sauce is becoming thicker? Yeah. And how it's just kind of lightly simmering? And I've just been whisking it, so you just wanna whisk it while it cooks, and that just kind of helps break up that oat flour and make some really smooth sauce as it Looks cooks. Good. So it, see yeah, how it's pretty easy, easy that is? That's it's literally hard. garlic, oat flour, and milk. Yeah, and I always feel like milk. jarred sauces are kind of not great anyway, so right. this, this is easy. You and the ingredients this. aren't always great Yeah, that's true. in a jarred sauce. So now we're gonna add our Parmesan cheese, and that's gonna be what will make this a cheese sauce. Mm. And it'll also help thicken it a little bit more. So you just kinda, kind of want to whisk that cheese in and it will melt just a little bit and it won't melt perfectly because it's Parmesan cheese. If you did like a shredded cheese, it would melt really nicely, but it will all kind of come together salt. and it, oh, it tastes so yeah. delicious. So Emily, if you can go ahead and reach over, sure. you can add that cream sauce and you can kind of just pour that over the cauliflower that's already been roasted. This is awesome and easy. Yeah, this looks good. Then we're going to use the same pan that we just used to cook our sauce, and we're going to saute the onions that Emily diced. So Emily actually has moved to Tennessee with us. Well, not just Emily, her whole family <laughs> <laughs> has moved with us and come along from Michigan. And um, so, Em, do you want to kind of share your story about how you ended up here? Yeah, so obviously our husbands work together, Sean and Brett, and so when you told us that you were looking in Tennessee, I was, oh, it's, well this means we might be moving too, and it was a lot to, um, just to, to think about, but with, you And know, you weren't, you weren't, she wasn't very keen on the idea it at wasn't. First, to be honest. Yeah, because it's meant leaving family, you know, my in-laws, and it was really hard to leave everything I knew, even though you are a sense of comfort, and so really, we just had to pray, you know, God, what does this mean for our family? You know, we didn't want to leave just because of a job. We also wanted to leave knowing that God was calling us as an individual family too. And with much prayer and um, wise counsel, we, we felt peace about it. And uh, so now we've been here just for a little while and I love it, um, just the beauty of Tennessee, but also being with family, but I just sense such a peace here and that's how I know I'm in the center of God's will. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna add these onions over the top. Well, that looks so and good. And all you wanna do is just make sure that they're just tender and brings out the flavor when you saute them, so that's why we sauteed them. And then we're gonna stir everything kind of together. And really, everything is just done in one pan. So super simple. Mm -hmm. And if you, like I said, if you already buy some pre-cooked bacon, then that takes even more workout for and you. Even frozen cauliflower can quicken that process. Yes, too. for sure. So technically, while you're making the sauce and you're sauteing the onions, you can be roasting your cauliflower at the same time so that it's all done in one step. Um, you know, you don't have to roast it ahead of time. So we're just mixing the cauliflower in with the sauce to make sure it's all coated. Mm -hmm. And that looks really good. Now you can top it with the cheese and the okay. bacon, the best parts. All right, we're gonna roast this 425 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes, just until the cheese is bubbly and melted on top, and it will be the most delicious side that you'll ever 
I don't want to say that. <laughs> well, I can't guarantee your that. Your entire life. Can't guarantee. <laughs> We're gonna roast this 425 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes just until the cheese is melted and bubbly on top. Easy. <laughs> no more. Coming up next, stuffed with chicken, green chilies, corn, and cheese. These white cheese chicken enchiladas will quickly become a favorite of any guest. One of my favorite style of dishes to make when people come over is Mexican themed dishes. And the reason for that is you can make tacos, burritos, enchiladas, and you can put a bunch of different toppings out for people to kind of customize them according to how they like them. So that's a fun way to let people eat how they personally like while you made the main dish. So we're gonna make white chicken enchiladas today, and these are one of my absolute favorite Mexican dishes. I think out of all of Dashing Dish, this might be one of the most popular dishes on Dashing Dish. So we just have some shredded chicken in a bowl. Three to four cups will be really good to make an entire pan of enchiladas. And then for the sauce, we're gonna do one cup of green enchilada sauce, four ounces of green chili, one half cup of Greek yogurt, a can of corn, and then some shredded cheese, about two cups, a fourth teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of cumin. So Emily, we have our chicken in the bowl. You can go ahead and add all of those ingredients. Okay. I'm gonna do half of the shredded cheese so that we can save some for the topping. And all I did was I just took the chicken, put it in raw, and then I put in about two cups of chicken broth. And that's one of the easiest ways to make your own shredded chicken. And then you just cook it for four hours on high or eight hours on low and shred it with two forks. And if I were making this just for my kids, I would do without the green onions. So you can also customize kind of what you put into this filling as well. And it's very flavorful. You can already smell the green chilies and the cumin. So it smells really good. So we have some tortillas that we warmed up here. And Emily, you can just do it right on. We have a clean counter here. So we're gonna kind of fill, fill them together and roll them up. And you can put them seam side down right into the baking dish. So I just always tell people when it comes to breads and pastas, try and just find the most nutritious option available. If you have to eat a white tortilla or white pasta, you're not gonna die. <laughs> it's just something that if you're gonna eat it, you know, regularly, I always suggest that you use something that has a little more nutrition to it. And you know, there's just so many different kinds of tortillas now. Yeah. So you can just look and, and kind of read the ingredients on the package and find one that's a little bit better for you. And it will honestly make you feel better mm -hmm. after you're done eating them. You know, that's what I always tell people when it comes to healthy eating, it's not about, you know, it's not all about how much you weigh or how many, how many calories, things like that. A lot of times it just comes down to how you feel. Mm -hmm. And we found that when we cut out some of the more processed foods and the white foods that didn't have any, you know, nutritional value, we just felt better. We have more energy. We don't need a three o'clock pick me up um, because our blood sugar is sustained throughout the day and we just feel better. So we're going to bake these 425 degrees for 20 minutes. Coming up next, we can't leave out dessert. Whipped cream, berries, chocolate chips, you can't go wrong with these six ingredient trifles.
All right, well, we're gonna end on a sweet note, which is my favorite dessert to make for guests. And it is a trifle, so you can kind of make this however your guests would like. So different ingredients and different toppings, and that's what I love about it. And I love that it's so easy to make and presents beautifully every time. We almost always have a trifle yeah. for our family gatherings, don't we? Because it's light. Yes. And so it's not a heavy dessert that you just don't have room for, you always can find room for trifle. You always can. <laughs> and it looks so pretty. It, it makes you just want to eat it. Yes. So I'm going to take some whip topping. I like to use True Whip or Coconut Whip, or you can make your own whipped cream if you're really that adventurous. And then I have two eight ounce tubs of the True Whip. And Emily, you just have any kind of cookie of choice. She has vanilla wafers and you just wanna use one box of cookie of choice. And you're gonna crush them up using a rolling pin. And I'm gonna do a little trick that I like to do when I make my trifles, which is put the whipped cream into kind of your own homemade piping bag. And all you have to do is take a spatula, a big spatula, and put your hand in the Ziploc bag like this. Do you ever do this? No, it looks you know? fancy. Well, it just makes it a lot easier to get the whipped cream wow. in the container. I'm just entertaining like this. <laughs> and so you just kind of fall. <laughs> fold it over like that. So you you kind of just nice. get all the whipped cream in there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest in there. Multi-use for rolling pins here. Love it. Yes. And Ziploc bags. Yes. All right, so we got our whip topping all in there. And then I'm gonna show you how we make it into a piping bag. We just wanna get all of the air out. And you see how all the whipped cream is right in there? Oh, that looks so good. So now we just wanna cut a little end off and we're going to be able to pipe it into our glasses. Now, a trifle is essentially just layers of different dessert items into a glass bowl, and usually it has a stand on it. But what I like to do, especially more recently, is make little mini individual trifles because then everybody can kind of carry them around yeah. and talk and just enjoy their dessert while they're mingling. And you could make this like make your own trifle bar too because we love bars. Yes, true. That sounded funny. We love bars. <laughs> <laughs> you could. You could definitely. <laughs> you could make your own trifle bar. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because it's fun okay. <laughs> to go to a bar. <laughs> Especially if you're natural. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so, so I do have individual glasses that I just got at different garage sales. Oh, so that's I kind fun. of have collected these over the years but you could do mason jars or any kind of clear dish or even a big clear bowl. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take turns kind of with the ingredients, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You just layer it into the glasses and make different layers. Now, Em, you could top the trifles with the chocolate chips or you could put it oh, in every layer. it needs every layer. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna just add some whipped cream in between your layers the here. The best part. Absolutely. And Em, have you found it easy or more difficult than you thought to make friends since we moved? You know, it's a challenge because we haven't had to learn to make friends in yeah, a while true. being um, in a new place. But, you know, one thing I've learned is you can't do life alone and you have to make friends. So you have to actually get out of your comfort zone. Yes. So, um, and right. we've both said that. Yeah, we've both hard. been like, oh my gosh, I have to get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And sometimes it's painful, but we've really made a an actual effort to do that, haven't we? We're in the process. So I know you guys found a church. Um, you started going to small group, which is awesome. And that's what uh, my family and I are currently in the process of is finding what, where's our home church? And, you know, we both agreed, my husband and I, that once we find our church, we have to get plugged in because, you know, you come and go on a Sunday, but you're not going to make real re relationships and real friends to do life with just by going on a Sunday. And I mean, honestly, the, the greatest thing that Sean and I have said since we've moved is, you know, we need to just grow and stretch. And sometimes that isn't comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes 
you'd rather just sit at home in your pajamas and not meet people (laughs) or do anything uncomfortable. But we have taken every opportunity that we've found. Um, For me, that meant going to a prayer group at my daughter's school. And it's early, early on a Friday morning. And I've been really just making myself get out of bed, get out of my pajamas and go meet other moms to pray with. And that's been really beneficial. So you can see how beautiful these look. What do you say that we go set the table and get ready for some friends to come over? Our new friends. Let's do it. Well, I hope today's show inspired you to make delicious, easy meals for your family and friends at your next get together. Emma, I had so much fun making all these dishes with you and they really were so simple to make, weren't they? And they look beautiful as well. So I would love if you gave one of those desserts a try. I always like to reward my sous chefs with a little (laughs) taste test before company comes over. I love eating dessert before dinner. That's the way we do it in our family. For all of these recipes, you can head over to dashingdish.com where you'll find resources to nourish your body and soul. Cheesy cauliflower gratin. Gratin. Gratin? Gratin. Say it rotten. Rotten. You should say it. Say, is it gratin? 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 Gratin. Gratin. Sounds like rotten. Can we go? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) I always wait for Robin to say, whenever you're ready. You're ready. AK, hurry up.